There was nobody, uh -huh. only Samuel came to shout. I was like, oh. Come on, Mrs. Brother. I heard him. Yes, Brother. Say like, not, you know, so I, I just felt like, uh uh, I'm really missing having my children around. And I'm reminding myself that, okay, they're going to grow. Get used to the fact that at some point in time you would be would letting go, you mm. know. So this is just a first sample yeah. of what it's like to so let go. Enjoy it. I didn't actually. I I really wish that they were around. I I I, I didn't miss, think I would miss them like that yeah. because like I feel like that's they gone. Oh, four, four days. Four days. Four days. Four, nice wow, four days. you're missing yeah. them like this. <laughs> no, I, when I travel. But being at at home and not having yeah because you also went away for yes. a long time so yeah. when you come here it's better than yeah. yeah. you know so but i didn't busy i'm doing amazing it was a family weekend for us so um what happened on okay friday i came to work then went home um saturday went to look for i went to um, shop hunting <laughs> went around if we that we don't have yes, it so. i went around the whole place you know but uh, yesterday we went to uh, the beach, the whole family. We just wanted to have a good time outside. Uh, you know, it's their midterm. They're going to be around for one week at home. And if I didn't do it yesterday, I wouldn't do it. They would just be home. So I said, okay, let's take this opportunity to hang out with them. So we're at the beach till like 5, 6 p.m. yesterday. We had fun. I played with the water, you know, just family time. Played cards and That's everybody nice. was just cool, yeah. Fantastic. And um, work starts this week. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so my kids were also, my, my daughter, Elizabeth, mm -hmm. was actually on the school trip, so just, she was just looking forward to just get away from the house. And I pitied her, I tell you that she visited us. But she had fun. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was good to see her again on Sunday. We, I made pizza at home on Saturday, really homemade pizza. It was fantastic. Uh -huh. They're not buying, was there, they're not buying pizza, pizza again. again. Yeah. Yeah, they don't put enough cheese. Oh. So I, put, I bought lots of mozzarella. We, I mean, oh, everything was very okay. stretchy. Oh. The kids enjoyed it. Elizabeth was not around, she didn't eat it. She's not looking at the pictures. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you were doing your own too. <laughs> so and she compensated the words yes. at home. But I was wondering when she got a gift. <clears throat> she, she came back because they gave her shopping money. Mm. To okay. go out, so. so she got a gift for you. For me. I, was like, oh. I don't want to buy for daddy because daddy might not like whatever I buy for you. Oh. <laughs> from experience, you know? So for me, she came and I love the gifts. I'm going to wear it one of these, one of the weeks. Please do. That's Lovely cool. And yeah, I was really surprised because I'm not a fashionista. I'm not, hey. I used to even go and pick this one out. I mean, obviously, you don't have my blood. <laughs> that's your grandma's blood. Uh, Anyways, that's so cool. let's go so on a quick break. They got their daddy a gift. A gift. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> let me not just say anything. Let's, let's go way. on a quick break. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. All right, we're going to start with uh, the Nation for the paper review. All right, so the Nation, let's start with that. Um, new governors grown under heavy debts. Buhari submits asset declaration forms, shows zero debts. 10th National Assembly, Tinubu meets PDP, LP, other lawmakers tomorrow. Subsidy, NLC under pressure over strike threat. Controversy over attack on Kogi Governor's convoy. Okay. Which story are we starting with in Nation? 
Hmm. Who has the major headline? I do. It's not opening properly so that I get all the details. Okay, let me take, uh, while you're trying to get yours open, the for, uh, our former president, it's weird to say it, uh, Mohammed Buhari has submitted his assets declaration form to the Code of Conduct Bureau. Um, that's in line with Chapter 6 of the Constitution. <coughs> his, um, uh, his assistant um, on media and publicity um, said this. This was actually posted it on his Twitter handle, and it says that the Code of Conduct Bureau today issued an acknowledgement receipt. Um, the completed declaration shows that his movable assets, that's the former president's movable assets, did not increase at home or, or outside and did not add new bank accounts outside the only one he had in Union Bank Kaduna. He has taken no loans and has no liability. The number of animals in his farm recorded a little decrease due to the number he gave out as gifts in the last four years. And that's what I have. So, okay. so uh, let me try and see how I can get all the story. It says, um, they've said that um, the newly sworn in state governors are already on a war path with their predecessor less than a week after resuming power. So the story went ahead to mention uh, some of them, uh, which is covered by adverts since I'm reading online. Uh, but they said that Zafra State counterpart Daudalawa gave his predecessor better Bello Matawale and his deputy five working days to return all government vehicles in their possession. He said uh, he had accused him of going away with all the vehicles uh, he claimed to have bought with a combined sum of over two billion. They also mentioned that the new governor of Akwaibom State, Umo Eno, has a debt burden of 264 billion to deal with, while Peter Mba of Inugu State, Uba Sani of Kaduna State, and Caleb <coughs> Muftuang of Plateau State are sweating over the security challenges they inherited from their predecessors. So um, I think basically all, most of the governors, new governors are complaining that they have inherited debts. Mm. There's no money in the coffers. And, you know, for Zampara State, they said that um, the cars that they had used government money to buy are not present in the government house. So they are giving them just five days to return all the vehicles because right. they are government vehicles that has um, to be used by government officials. All right, so ahead of the proclamation of the 10th National Assembly, President Bola Tinumbu uh, will be meeting the opposition senators and House of Representative members on Monday. That's today. By 3 p.m., I said that uh, although they didn't give us the details of what the meeting would be about, but uh, the report said that they believe it will be centered around the quest to firm up a um, harmonious relationship between the executive and the legislature, as well as fine-tune the process of electing leadership of the National Assembly. If you recall... Um, the National Working Committee of the APC had anointed Godwill Akpabio South South and uh, Moral Jubrin Northwest as Senate President and Deputy Senate President, um, respectively, and also endorsed Tajuddin Abbas Northwest and Ben Kalu South East as Speaker and Deputy Speaker, respectively. respectively. So the meeting is taking place at, um, they will meet with the Senate at 3 and then with the House of Rep at 5. And my thought was, there's a lot of the, uh, pres our new president is being very, very active. There's a lot of meetings going on. Yeah. And I'm hoping that we don't have a divided house. We have a politically divided house. But if we can get the politically divided house to be focused yes. on, united in bringing Nigeria, yeah. delivering a better Nigeria for the citizen with them will be good. I like that I'm even hearing from this person. You know, usually we don't really hear from our president. So, yes. I mean, he's been speaking for the past few days concerning... Ah. Yeah. Yeah. He's talking, now. talking. Was, yeah. This is where we now. Yeah. 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 Because, because it's after now. We know we'll now see if he's going to continue, continue with the action. We need that continuous conversation. Let's go on now to the next paper. The Punch. Subsidy. NLC shuns federal government meeting. Electricity workers back strike. Senate queries Accountant General over 910 billion Naira MDA's loan. Trapped funds. Foreign Airlines plan meeting with federal government. PDP wants Tinubu to make asset declaration public. 18 die in Kano crash. FRSC boss warns against overloading. OPEC raises Nigeria's call, um, output. Our Saudi Arabia cuts production. And NDLEA seizes 390 kg illicit drugs in four states. Okay. Story are we taking? Yeah, manager story uh, said there was a car crash that occurred on Friday at Zakirai Town on Kanu Rigim Road in Gabasawa local government area of Kanu State. Said about 18 persons were burned to death. Uh, according to the court martial, Federal Road Safety Corps, Dauda 
He had um, cautioned motorists against dangerous overtaking, overloading, and night travels. And so, while confirming the crash, the Kano State Sector Commander of the FRSC, um, Ibrahim Abdullahi, said other 12 passengers suffered varying degrees of injury in the crash, while five others escaped unhurt. Uh, said the disease, um, the accident involved two commercial vehicles, and they had been the people who died had been given in mass. Very well. They said one of the vehicles, I think the Volkswagen, was filled up, overloaded with children, and the other one was also overloaded. And by the time they collided against each other, one of them you know, was caught up in flames. And so he you know, attributed the accident to overspeeding, dangerous driving, overloading, and that was what resulted to the head-on collision that happened. They said the accident involved a total of 35 passengers and two buses, which we had mentioned that 18 were burnt. Uh, beyond recognition, 12 suffered varying degrees of injuries, and people just need to be careful when they are taking those routes. That overtaking without seeing properly is usually one of the problems. So, I, I have a story of um, the controversy around um, Kogi state governor's attack. Um, apparently, the, the, the attack is alleged to have been carried out by the a governorship aspirant who was a member of APC but now has come to S SDP when he wasn't allowed to um, contest in the party primaries of the state. <coughs> he mentioned that this, this, the person's name is um, Murtala Yak Yakubu Ajaka and he, they, con they said that his convoy was coming around the na um, naval base of Lokoja when they realized that the governor's convoy was on the opposite side, that they blocked the road and they were shooting sporadically into the air, and that the governor left the scene on scat, but a few of his um, aides that were attached to him sustained some degree of injuries, and they were rushed to the hospital. Mm -hmm. That's according to the Commissioner for Information for the State. Um, but the other side of the division have said that they were not involved, that it was all a lie. They said they were not involved in the attack, that it is just out of fear that the governor is raising <coughs> such attack that where was the governor attacked and that they were that they, they were not like it's as if they are reporting two different things mm. so um there's no information from the police confirming if right. it happened or not but the commissioner for information for the state is urging residents to be calm they have said they've also sent a letter to all the members of apc that there should be no reprisal attack and that they are urging citizens to remain calm that they would the rule of law will be used to handle the hoodlums that have been arrested. Let me pause you. Let me pause. I have to go on a break, unfortunately. We cannot hear you. I think we're going to go on a break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're on to something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. 
Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the grand comedian of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Benga the Inca, the first! Woo! OJ right here, 7 of 7, like you already know. Benga right here, 7 of 7, like I'm beginning to know. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It's now time for the question. You don't scare me one bit. Bata bata, I go drink. So, okay. so now one chance for enter. My, My first, first question. question. Do you remember? Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Punch. Mariam, uh, you're going to copy your story. Yes, right. so I was saying NDLEA had intercepted um, not less than 76.9 kg of Canadian loud. Um, and this was done, um, they seized the illicit drugs June 1st and June 2nd. They had a joint inspection of the shipment with men of the Nigerian Customs. And it was based on, uh, the seizure was based on uh, intelligence that they had received. Um, that. <laughs> requested for 100% examination of the shipment as a result of, you know, the intelligence. So these um, illicit drugs were found in four used vehicles in a container that had come in from Canada and had gone to the Port Harcourt Ports Complex in Onair River State. Um, NDLA as well said they stormed Iwe Forest in the Iwe community in Owen West local government where there was a large warehouse of skunk used to store 231 jumbo bags of psychotropic substance weighing over 3,000 kg. That was set ablaze as well. Mm -hmm. And then a few other um, individuals in Kano State, a, a female in Kaduna State, all you know, possessing one mm. drug or the other, and they were all arrested. <clears throat> okay, I was going to take OPEC. Um, so members and non-members of OPEC have agreed on Sunday um, to cut crude oil production volumes in order to ensure global oil market stability but allowed Nigeria, Congo and Angola to continue to produce <coughs> maximally to their OPEC quota. Um, this is good news for Nigeria because according to our representative who, was, who attended the 35th Joint Ministerial Monitoring Committee meeting in OPEC held in Vienna, <coughs> Austria on Sunday, they said that they're allowing these three African countries to continue to produce maximally um, and that um, Saudi Arabia especially even cut extra $1 million, uh, 1 million barrels per hour um, um, over the weekend yesterday on Sunday. Um, said so Nigeria's highest crude production is 1.3. They're hoping that with the new president's and um, the new administration's fight um, against insecurity, hopefully we can wrap that up to 1.5 million barrels per day in the coming months. But I'm happy that that would help to globally stabilize the, uh, the value of the crude across board so that um, hopefully we should be able to benefit from that. Uh, many other stories. Let's move on to the punch or to the point. The untold story, um, how commission forced 500 contractors back to site over 40 billion naira abandoned constituency projects. Mm -hmm. Few subsidy removal, Nigerians adjust lifestyle, <coughs> say sac um, sacrifices for better country, inevitable. 
family battles ex-PTA chair for allegedly grabbing school principal's land, causing his death. Who has that story? Go ahead, please. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's a really complicated story. Okay. It happened in the um, technical college, government technical college, Oshobo, um, in Oshun State. The principal has had collected money from mm -hmm. some students who were said to have um, been fighting as penalties. The money from this student amounted to 680,000 Naira. Yeah. The PTA is aware that there is a fine placed on students that were fighting, and the PTA raised the issue after a few months that they needed to use the money for repairs within <coughs> the school. The principal has spent the money <laughs> personally. So the PTA and now reported to the authorities that the principal spent school fines from children on mm. personal bills he must pay back. After going back and forth, he started paying back in 20, 20,000 Naira, I mean 50, 50,000 Naira for four months before he retired. And upon his retirement, a new principal was appointed to the school. The new principal now called him that, how will you pay since you have the retired money. the remaining money? He now brought his land to the school, the document yeah. of his land to the school. Uh, fast forward to a few, two years after, when the man died. The man, the man, they said the man died based on, he found out that his land the PTA chairman has built a house on the his land. House. Oh. A personal house on he his the land people. that he put as guarantee. Oh. So the, the children are, are claiming that it was the shock of that that made him die. So now the children are saying, give us back our oh, land. Man. The PTA chairman has built house on the land. I'm wondering, is that the PTA chairman bought the land for four, the, the many okay, money? Let us know. He's a major. He's a super story. He's a super story. He's a movie. So he brought the land as collateral. Like yeah. Yes. yes. To pay his many bills. Meanwhile, PTA chairman oh. as collateral. That's so wickedness. Okay, so this is the corruption boy. Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who's on pass? Who's on pass? Yeah. 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 Vanguard subsidy. <coughs> NLC <coughs> Sean's meeting yeah. with yeah. FGT uses yeah. six uh, pay rise. OPEC cuts Nigeria's oil outputs by 20.7% to 1.3 million barrels per day. Okay, that's not the story I read earlier. Senate <clears throat> indicts AG over failure to recover 910 billion naira short-term loan to MDAs. Subsidy, Samuelu begs NLC to shelve <coughs> strike. Kogi Gubapo, APC's Ododo picks primary school teacher as running mate. 18 passengers die in Kano auto crash. Uh, Zenith Bank MD emerges best banking CEO in Africa. Bandits kill scores in Zamfara, abduct over 30 girls. Okay, which story in Vanguard? Yeah, the bandits said this weekend they attacked communities in Maradan local government area of Zamfara State. Uh, they killed many locals, abducted no fewer than 30 girls. According to one of the survivors, told the BBC Hausa uh, service in an interview which was uh, monitored yesterday that she managed to escape from captivity and returned only with her headscarf. Said the terrorists attacked Sakida and Jambako communities on Saturday afternoon, killing over 20 villagers at Sakida and injuring others. According to a villager who survived the attack as well, said they woke up peacefully, there was rain, and some locals had to prepare to go to the farm. But suddenly there was a report that terrorists had attacked a neighboring village, Sakida. And um, you know, the local vigilante, that's the JTF, called the people of Jampako, they all came together with other volunteers and, you know, they took up arms from the village and went to attack, you know, the bandits. But they said there was a hill before you get to the village and they didn't have any idea that the uh, bandits had laid an ambush for them mm -hmm. behind the hill. So they opened fire on the people and about 22 people died and were buried. Mm. So they're saying that security operatives were also called, but those ones replied that they cannot come immediately because they are armored personnel carrier was not on ground. It says some of those areas do not even have any form of security surrounding the place. So they said, but they are, the JTF, that's the security operatives, tried by chasing the terrorists. And some of them came back. They had to bring back the motorcycles belonging to some of these um, terrorists. But the governor of Zampara State is saying that this is not acceptable. Uh, they need a lot of help. They have called service chiefs together that they need to find a way to secure the lives and property of their people in Zamfara State. There are some areas that don't have any form of security at all. He has asked that they deploy security officials there, at least so that these things don't, it does not continue to happen over and over again. Yeah. Okay. So I have the story. The Lagos State Governor has appealed to NLC to shove his plan for a nationwide strike against fuel subsidy, saying that governors are already discussing ways to mitigate the effects. Um, 
the governor made this appeal, they said on Sunday. Um, he says that NLC and, and labor unions should support the president, who's only been, you know, president for a week, and not turn this um, thing into a political issue, that um, the strike will not in any way, you know, resolve the issue, and that he's hoping that even Lagos State, they're, they're looking, that the president has said something about better wages, that even as a state, Lagos State, they're looking by January, you know, to do something along that side. It's just appealing that everybody should work together, especially with this new um, president. Um, let us be patient, work with the president. Um, NMPC said he has more than enough fuel to go around, so there's no need to heat up the politics. That's basically what he was saying. So the Kogi State Governorship candidate of the APC, Usman Ododo, <clears throat> unveiled a primary school teacher, Salifu Joel, on Sunday as his running mate for the November 11th election. Um, the, the news agency of Nigeria reports that um, Salif Uzdiol is the current chairman of the Nigerian Union of Teachers. Very strategic. <laughs> Very. Very strategic. And the treasurer of the NLC, the Nigerian Labour Congress, in fact. <laughs> I was wondering primary school I mean, It sounded noble. Yeah. But you now see that which kind of primary school is like NUCJ. So, yeah. well, well, Governor Yaya Bello said that um, he has done well. I mean, even so, he said so himself. He has said that he will leave no stone on, uh, on turn to ensure that APC wins for the governorship uh, 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 elections in November. He says that APC will follow and abide by all the rules. I was going to go to where he was saying what he has done. More so, my administration has performed creditably well in the areas of infrastructure, provision, quality education and health care delivery, amongst others. Mm. And they are sure that this um, new government coming in, hopefully when he's elected, he will, he will be able to do much better and they will not tolerate any politics of bitterness, condone any acts of political violence. But it's quite strategic. You know, when you bring, when you bring in a teacher mm -hmm. to run, because many teachers are actually, uh, they're very, very it's crucial. A power block. Yes, it's yeah, a, a huge, block. it's a huge mm -hmm. voting block also. Mm -hmm. Very, very huge voting block. So it, 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 it could be a strategic voting, or noble. Voting block is your fellow <laughs> colleagues support you now. Eh, but just, uh, <laughs> and well, don't be your night teacher. Well, and you teach her. Now them get the power. I want to quickly take the story about the accountant, the Senate indicting the AGF about loans that were given to, um, they say special funds being abused. They asked the AGF to request and retrieve those loans. So MDAs had gotten a total of $910 billion in 2017 and the money was supposed to be a short-term loan but the money wasn't recovered they did not repay those loans back the agf has claimed that the several letters were written to the minister for finance to order authorize the settlement of this loan granted to the mdas and they obviously haven't done that so this investigation was carried out by the um let me mention the name of the senator senator Math matthew urubide of edo south and they were overlooking, going through the Auditor General's report of 2017 and realized that there was an outstanding 910 billion naira mm. short term loan that never came back into the government coffers. Like, mm. right, if you know what 910 billion naira would do, do for, Nigeria, for entrepreneurs right. in Nigeria trying to get loan, even if you give it to them at ten, less than at a single digit, the impact will be massive. It's okay. I'm just wasting money. That is all we can take on front page review when we come back. We start with our hot topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail or maybe mocktail we need a bit of sports a sprinkling of current affairs some very deep topical issues and last but not the least a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate and yes you guessed it women So, if you catch the drift, then you're on to something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities, right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table.
Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtain? Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known, for when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking advocating, protesting, as the arts are meant to be. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the one who can make time stand still forever, Mr. Kelechi Amadi. <laughs> 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 How are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good, my brother. You love that intro, I mean. Yeah. It was great. Okay, yeah. Thank we, you. We, we thank try you. like that. Thank you. Thank you. Now my question, which I feel is a cheap question. Oh, go ahead. What does ISO stand for? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That is it. I think I will drink. <laughs> no, you're joking. I'm not joking. Glitch, <laughs> my No. <laughs> She, you didn't want me. me. You want me no. I think I'll drink. Huh? No problem. Okay. I've always known this as ISO. I never bothered to know what it means. I know what it means, but I never. Thanks for staying with us. The Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, said it will begin a nationwide strike on Wednesday over the current increase in pump price as a result of the removal of subsidy. According to NLC, we would embark on a strike if Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, fails to revert the current template or the increase in the price of fuel occasioned by the withdrawal of fuel subsidy. Now, this is the only news Nigerians are talking about today and is the hottest topic of the season. Um, the Tinubu administration is a week old, about a week old now, and many people are still saying that may, there are different views concerning subsidy removal. Others are saying that it's a good thing. Some are saying um, there's, a prop, there, there's, a, there's a need for review because it's such a hard, it's a harsh um, development for Nigerians at this time especially. Some are saying it's not the right time. We should wait for the right time. What are your thoughts on this issue? We'd like to hear from Nigerians because... Many people are talking about it, but you see, it's always good when we hear from Nigerians directly how, it, how they feel about it, and it's great feedback for our policymakers. You can call us on the numbers on your screen, 081-270-536-87-091-390-76948. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read the tweet. From what you um, said earlier, Governor of Lagos State, for example, has said that has appealed to workers not to go on strike. Uh, Ulisa Metu uh, that also appealed in the southeast that, they should, that um, workers shouldn't go on strike. Although the electricity, Nigerian electricity workers have Stop. said they will also join NLC. So there are different sides to this. What are your thoughts? Let me say, I don't know who would like to go first, but um, what are your thoughts? First of all, we, I know we discussed it last week, but what are your own general thoughts on the fact that they want, uh, NLC has, they want to go on strike? I will say okay. I'm not surprised because we kind of yeah. knew this was going to happen. Yeah. But. Um, you know, on the one hand, it's like, please, let's not start this way. Mm. Let's not go on strike. Let's find out how to um, solve this issue amicably. 
let's sit down and have conversations. Um, from what we've seen so far, we see that this administration looks ready to have these conversations. But even I have <coughs> questions. Uh, we remember the president's speech when he said subsidy is gone, and then we explained to a day later that it wasn't that um, the subsidy implementation is gone immediately, the removal is done immediately. It was, you know, just part of the speech. But then we now have a list of prices for new prices set up by NMPC. And I'm like, why are we giving us prices again? When you remove subsidy, the market forces, are they not supposed to, you know, just determine the prices of petrol. So why are you giving us prices? So what is happening? So I personally, I have questions. And I'm guessing those are the questions NLC has. But you cannot have answers to these questions if you're not going for meetings, you know, mm -hmm. having this conversation. So um, I know that eventually we're going to have some resource people come and talk to us. And um, so I'm not looking at NLC as a bad guy. I'm not pointing to them and saying, oh, people are just wanting to disrupt yeah. um you know or hit up the polity there are questions that need to be asked they need to be they're, they're doing this for the interest of nigerians they need to be sure that government understands that this mm. is tough on nigerians the right. prices are heavy you know everybody's mm. saying it everybody's complaining about it and now we're not just talking of you know already mm. regular nigerians you know are struggling with this we're even talking of middle class people mm. who you know, for most of it, are able to handle, right. have been able to handle these prices. But these ones, these yeah. prices, they're, yeah. they're just too let much. Me, let, me, let me come to you. Um, you see, you like to go first next? Yes. What, what are your thoughts on this strike? I have bought the fuel myself. And I sat down after buying that fuel. I was calculating how much I'm earning and how much I'm going to be using to buy fuel if this continues for a month. And there is no way my current salary can buy fuel and still have enough food to eat there is no way so i have felt the pinch as a nigerian and i am asking the question so aside from the fact that i do not believe we'll get anywhere with the strikes we know how the strikes go uh, before you realize it some people are sorted their interests somehow are attended to and then they keep quiet and tell you okay don't worry now let's just wait a bit so we know how this goes i've been i've been in nigeria for all my life and I know how strikes go. So that's really not the solution. But like Miriam rightly said, NMPC has not been, I would say they have not been truthful to us. We are still asking the right questions. Um, the amount of fuel you say we are consuming on a daily basis as Nigerians is not consumable. You have not told us. We are still looking for data of the exact amount that is being paid for uh, the subsidy, the trillions you have mentioned, we're still looking for that data. There are questions that you have to come out and tell us. And what makes you the uh, authority to fix prices? So you're fixing prices on your old products. It's not like they have bought new products, or they have not. So because the president just said subsidy is gone, you went back quickly to update your old product and rip Nigerians off. Why didn't you wait till it's time to, um, um, you know, get the... Uh, uh, import the petroleum. Why didn't you wait and then you fix the price according to or allow market forces to determine the price? I know that you, you shouldn't charge less than 100 because 100 is actually the cost price. Yeah. So you decide how much you want to. So when I saw that figure between 500 or whatever, I can't remember the figure they wrote, is it 490 and 500? I'm thinking in my head that, okay, they are saying there's a range. We know the cost of this thing. Mm. So that range is the figure we saw. It's not as if they didn't give us a number. Say, okay, you must charge this price. They're telling you, this is the range you, should, you can build. You can't build more than this, this, this amount. Mm. You can't go less. Mm. So nobody, they didn't, they didn't come up with a figure, unless, unless I'm mistaken. No, but no, that's no, how... No, 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 no Petrol. Nobody imports petrol. It's now limited, it's, yes. Yes, it's yes. limited, no. but it's still highly controlled by government. So you say you are paying subsidy and subsidy has been removed. Why don't you wait to allow market forces? What's the hurry? The okay. subsidy money that was taken out that we're not paying again is starting from June. By 31st of May, you're already changing the prices. So, so I'll, 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 I'll come to you in a second. Then NPC said that they have about enough for 30 days. <coughs> yeah. So they already have the product. Yeah. So I've already bought the product. I'm not, market already. forces will come when I'm buying new products. Yeah. So right now, I already have this product in, and mm -hmm. I'm telling you, based on what my what I bought for this course, so this has these are the range that I expect people to pay at the at the pump prices. But you know what? We'll so come to that. But let me hear your initial thoughts, and I'll come back okay. to you. Yeah. So for me, I would say that the the process of removal was not smooth at all. I did not like the 
I didn't like the president's, our president's statement in saying subsidy is gone. I believe that we don't want subsidy. I have said over and over again that we don't need subsidy, that we need it as a people, but this framework of the current subsidy system is, is not profiting us as citizens. So I agree. Um, all candidates, I did not give my opinion last week on the show, all candidates that were aspiring for presidency said they were going to remove mm. subsidy. So we all knew subsidy had to go, mm -hmm. but it was not a case of the leader coming on the first speech to say subsidy is gone. That was not a, the right way to make that transition. If the government had the new administration knowing what they were going to do, all of us had been prepared, everybody, the, everybody in government now knew what was going to happen. Knowing what they were going to do, knowing the impact it will have on people, could have designed a better approach on how to do this. What, what, what a better approach? I know that we are going to have a conversation. All NLC come around. This is it. We all know. I have discussed with NLC. Maybe I come into power as the president. The first meeting I had is with NLC. The next meeting I had is with TUC. Everybody has the conversation. The NNPCL, I mean, NNPC, yeah, 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 PCL right. comes in to that same meeting. The major oil marketers, no, let me establish my scenario. Major oil marketers are in that meeting. The NNPC, um, for all the, um, the, 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 we have major, the stakeholders are in the meeting, and we, uh, I explain what we all know. Subsidy has to go. But with the stakeholders, how do we ensure that this subsidy removal does not shut down the country? Because if we, if, if, my, the impact on me was the next day, we did not have, all okay. was shut so down. So because we're not so, here last week when we discussed, I wanted mm, to go back to the fact that we reminded Nigerians mm. that... The president did not remove subsidy. Mm -hmm. It was already, it's not in the budget. Whether you like it or not, it's either an announcement or policy. Yeah. So, means your budget already does not have it. So, he announced, so, it did not announce, so, it's already gone. Yeah. Now, the meetings that you want to have, that, right? there's no other meeting that not, they've not had several times, even in the old administration. So, the point is that, even though that announcement was made, it was a point for Nigerians to prepare their mind, whether with or without that announcement, it was already gone. Well, yeah, we've discussed it here even before yeah. now, yeah. From, the, from the budget yes. that we did not have budget for subsidy. Simple. We also knew, and I had said it, that the previous administration was setting up the next administration for crisis. So the new nation knew there was going to be a crisis. And then the, statement now, we came, having? the statement now came heavy on the first day during your speech that mm. subsidy is gone. What that happened, what, what that cost was, everybody reacted. Mm. All filling station shut down. Yes, we wouldn't have had that if the statement did not come out that day. Mm. It wouldn't have happened like that. But it has happened from where we are now. What is the policy framework the government is going to implement to ensure that people are not profiteering off Nigerians? The price, the, went, having, the price went from... Uh, no, no, no. The conversation, mm -hmm. they are, it can't be a conversation. I'm, 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 I know. I'm, on, I'm in the media space. Is it, there, must have been a, there, should have been a, there should have been a decision on how they would address profiteering. We are Nigerians. We know once the subsidy is out, everybody will hike price. It proactively should have known immediately I made this statement, this is what will happen. So how do we address it? Not for us to now be still waiting for what is the government going to do. We already on, on this show said that we're not going to follow the policy. We don't agree with that policy of palliative of um, 10,000 era. It doesn't make sense. So what exactly is now the policy this government is going to use to mitigate the crisis that has happened now? Right. Where the average Nigerian cannot afford their salary cannot change overnight. And based on this current salary, with transportation going up, Absolutely. they cannot live the off the means. that refineries cannot be built overnight. Yeah. So somebody has to come halfway. Uh, yeah. The same way our salaries is not going to increase. Every, everything to mitigate this, mm -hmm. this removal cannot happen overnight. Mm -hmm. So remember we discussed the issue of trust. <coughs> yes. It's either we trust or we don't trust. Because mm -hmm. many would have said, all the various governments have had, we don't trust them. So even if you remove subsidies today, I don't trust that that amount of money you're going to save, you're going to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Now, we can now choose. Because we don't trust, we are going to carry placard and remain to pay subsidy. Mm -hmm. no, so no. we make a choice. No, no, I don't support it's a choice. I don't, I don't support so, so we see. So what, how do we then solve that problem? When we go on a break, when we come back, we take a few calls and hear a few more thoughts. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your Ladies views. and gentlemen, make welcome Pioneer Positive Force member, dancing queen of the 80s, non-conformist, 
Afrobeat historian in her right and long-standing member of the multiple award-winning all-female show, Your View, Omoyeni, Yeni, and Ifula Fokuti, aka Yay! YK Power! Ginger, yeah, take it, take it, take it. Yeah, today, yeah, ginger, yeah, ginger, today we'll go here. Hey, hmm. I don't read you. Are you sure? Huh. Hmm. I know I'm not here to answer questions, I'm here to drink. <laughs> We're in trouble today. <laughs> ah, wait, wait till your age. I was close now. Eh? I said he said 73. He said, I said 75. 75. I call him. wasn't even born till 75. Damn. So, will I drink out? Eh? You go drink too. <laughs> take, take, take. Make a, make a help you. Rush on, rush on, rush on. No, be half. Eh? Which half? <laughs> you will make me drink. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Light in, you know. Nepa, Nepa Road. Ah! <laughs> Nepa oh. Road. Nepa Road. In a <laughs> uh -uh. First of all, my brain cannot uh, memorize everything. A big black bug. A big black dog. Bug. A big black bug. Oh, sorry. A big. <laughs> <laughs> it all starts. Omo ah hey, Omi Omo fella, Omi Omo Anikola Pokuti. Oh no, baby, can you kick it? It's by Elgin Song, it's not by Elgin Song. Eh? Eh? Do you think you can outplay me in this game of Thanks for staying with us. So we're still discussing subsidy. As I said, it's the biggest news. Everybody's debating and saying all their various views on it. We'd like to hear from our own callers this morning. Please call in and let us know. Do you agree with NLC? Uh, on the strike, or do you agree with the administration that subsidy should go? Let us know your reasons. You can call us on 0812705367, You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweet. So, as I said earlier, NLC reaction is not surprising. I mean, we've been, even I've been expecting it. I was shocked that they're, they're not yet it's on okay, the streets. Mm -hmm. It was only Friday, and then they moved because the, and when, when, the, when the president made that statement, I thought the very next day NLC would be on the road. But hey, it's taking a few days to plan it, and they're now working together for Wednesday's um, strike action. Um, I heard that TUC has had a meeting with yeah. the presidency yesterday, or so maybe it was even today. They're having a meeting. It was, really, it was in the papers over the weekend when they made their own demands on what they want. NLC should be having another meeting with TUC again tomorrow. Hopefully, tomorrow NLC shows up. Uh, if they are able to make an agreement. But my question is what kind of middle ground? We hope NSC would look for what kind of middle ground should we have because everybody across board, as we said earlier, agrees that the subsidy should go. But the pain of it, Nigerians are feeling it. So, again, are we willing to sacrifice this pain or are we saying that we trust that the government would not do what they said they would do? So, we are not going to trust them and we're not going to accept this removal at this point. Okay, so we remember there was already a meeting and NLC met with federal government. Yes. But they said it was a deadlock, you know. So and, and I and I was and I would like to hear why. 
that happened. So what is it that NLC did not agree with and what was it that the federal government decided, you know, to put on the table? Um, and that would, you know, give us some sort of understanding. We know that um, NLC would always go back to the fact that our minimum wage is, you know, compared to our, mm, yeah. <laughs> you know, the situation on ground, it makes no sense. And I heard the president saying that that's one of the things that they are going to look into. If the the uh, minimum wage is not the issue, then what is the issue? Um, I know that we've talked about this many times, so could it just be the refineries they are talking about? Should we put down the refineries? Is the federal government saying that these refineries, the subsidy removal will go ahead even without the refineries being ready? Mm. Could it be, you know, there are just so many things, and mm. until we hear from them what was it that um, was disagreeable to them, I don't think this should be made into a political issue. I don't think this is even a political issue. We need to understand that Nigerians are crying and Nigerians want some things to be addressed. Right. But we need to also understand that here we are right now. We can't keep going back to, you should have said, how should you have said? The next step for me, I believe, is what is happening yeah. now. There is a table. Yeah. We are talking about it. And these are the agreements or these are our demands. Where can we meet in the middle? Okay. But what is the middle that NLC wants? If the uh, minimum wage that federal government is proposing is going to increase is not enough for them, what exactly are they asking? Let me take this call from Hassan. Good morning, Hassan. Are you there? Thanks for calling. Hey, everybody. You're live. Uh, please, um, Morayo, point of correction. I'm not one of those Nigerians that are against subsidies. Okay. Subsidies do not go. My point here is what should go is the criminality, the fraud in the, in the subsidies. That is my own open opinion. And that is the opinion of the majority of Nigerians. So let us get it corrected. Number two, please, let people go back to a drawing board and get to understand what is called subsidy. The so-called New World, the America, the Europe, are still subsidized. So that means subsidy is a good thing. So what, what are we talking about? Mm. With the increase in the price of petroleum in Nigeria today, everything will go up. That shows you the testing, testing nature of energy. We move around. We carry food around. The price of goods and services will go up. A lot of things will go up. Why are they afraid? I've been saying right from Buhari era. Why are you afraid to go for the front time? Why are you going for us? That is the issue. That is my question. Thank you very much, Hassan. Yeah. So, I mean, last week I had mentioned the fact that fuel is like an international product. We all buy Mac. I, I used the example of Mac makeup, hair, Brazilian hair, even phones that we use. The many, everybody has a phone. It's not produced in Nigeria. But we make that sacrifice to buy because it's not, they, they import it from China. They import it from, the, from wherever. And we find that money to buy it because we feel it's needed. This fuel either is not produced here. It's not refined here. It is brought in. It's an international product, but yet we're paying the local price for it. So we're saying that we've been subsidizing for X amount of years. We can't continue to subsidize it. Mm -hmm. So we must pay that international price unless we start producing it in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And that breaking the dango, the dango is the refinery. So if we have that analogy in mind mm -hmm. and say, okay, this thing must go, why is it so difficult for an NLC to understand that this international product that we are using, that we all need, we cannot continue to pay subsidy on it? Is it so difficult for NLC to get that? Or why do they, do they continue to insist on these products that Nigerians will buy, even if, especially if it was a phone, every Niger, almost all Nigerians now yes. have phones. We don't buy phones different. every week. Neither mm. do we buy phones every month. Yeah. Even Mac, your Mac powder, you use it for six it's months or bad. one year. And if it's finished, you, you can do it. without it. This petrol is more like life. We need it to run our businesses. We need it to run our cars, our generators. We don't have electricity. We need it for a lot of things. So it's a... It's a very essential commodity yeah. that government has tried so far to subsidize, which I doubt that subsidy, because the truth is everything will still be open. Far, breeze will soon blow. And, you know, let me not say the remaining one. You can understand the <laughs> adage. Everything, I still, I, I still do not believe that subsidy was even paid for this number of years that they're talking about. That's one. I still don't believe that. Now, secondly, why not say, now we have a table. We have a table. Then they have to come and prove it and give us the data. Is it not the data they're still looking for now? They're looking for data. I I'm looking for it. I've sworn that they have the papers since on this place. <laughs> Leave that one. So we have a table now. What I expect NLC to do is to say, we understand that subsidy has to go so that we can use the money 
allegedly used to pay subsidy to attend to other infrastructure in the country, but there are some things that you would have put in place to enable a seamless transition, which we don't have. That's fine. We're moving to solutions now. I think mm -hmm. we're not looking at the past. Why don't we, because these people have old products that will serve us for a, a, a number of months, right? One month. One month. Why don't we add just a little money on top because we're speculating that by the time they go back to buy, they will need to spend more. And not allow them give the current price on the old product. There's a way you do these things. We're business people. As a personal business, not even government uh, supported business. For old product that you need to restock. I'm not going to restock with the old money. So yeah, why are you listening? I, I heard you. So if you are, you, you, you will add something, though. Know? You will, something, no, you will uh... add something, but you will not give us the because you have not bought it. You have not I bought give it. Another you may get so. Hold on. Confused. You may get so. Let's say you are buying this. Um, you are buying the product now for five hundred naira, yes. right? And you know that if you finish selling this one, when you go back, because there's no more subsidy, yeah. we buy for one thousand. Exactly. You now decide to start charging 1, the customers one thousand five. For what you are going to buy 1,000 and you are selling the one of 500 naira and charging 1,005. You see where the, the cheating yes, so, is? Mm. So even they if pay you it know, in, they don't pay it in advance. advance. Mm. Subsidies okay. are paid after. Mm. So if they say that it's gone mm. on that 20, now that's why that statement was very powerful. Mm -hmm. As they said that subsidy <laughs> is gone, it means that from today, you cannot calculate and tell me to pay because they don't pay it in advance. Yeah. So that's the price they are selling now. They will go and reconcile mm. after. Mm. Yeah. That's why we're always having confusion regarding the consumption because Maybe we're not paying it. Right. Right. Also, yeah. So I guess the NMPC will also, in response to that, what they may say, you know, they said that federal government owes them 2.8 trillion. Yeah. So this is what they've bought without government handing them the money, money. Yes. for the they subsidies. Have to use that. So I don't so think they have a response, but yeah. it's not enough. Let me, no. let, me, let me take this call. I come to you. Praise your life. Thanks for calling. Okay. Yes, uh, I've been watching your program. The only thing there, the comparison there. Hello, are you with me? Very well. Go ahead, please. Yes, the comparison that you have compared with Brazilia here and the country you can't compare for Everybody is for an empty. He affects everybody. Yeah. When you buy Brazilia here today, can you buy it tomorrow? Mm -hmm. If you see your time today, mm -hmm. it is. You will take it for one or two weeks. You must buy another, but it's not compared to Brazilia. You said this, this thing last week. I wanted to ask all you my life because why you didn't mention it. Or don't compare Brazilia. Okay. Please, don't do that. It's not, it's not about cable. You, you buy Brazilia, you buy tomorrow. You don't buy everything. Why you everything? He has said everything. Please, don't compare the two. Thank you, Praise. Uh, so the point I was trying to make was that we are constantly using imported products. So it might not be Brazilian here you buy. So you buy one Brazilian here today, you buy a pair of trousers again, you buy maybe uh, your phone, then you buy your... There are different items we all have that's imported. So there are different ways of looking at these things. But the point I was trying to make is that we all use international products all the time. We're willing to pay. Diesel has been, is, is no more, is, has been deregulated for, for, a for, for, for a long time. And people have adjusted to that prices. So there are different ways of looking at it. But I hear you, it's, it's your view, let it count. Mm. Go ahead. So yes, I, I don't... I, um, all of us on the table don't support the NLC going on strike. Um, I, I don't think it will solve any problem. I, yes. In fact, it won't solve any problem at all. Going on strike so yet. It will not be, it, it won't solve problem because if it, if it solves the problem they want to solve, which is taking us back to subsidy, we would have a bigger problem. problem so we, have, we, have, we have a problem on ground. Let me remind Nigerians. Because, some, because of what I said earlier about um, the presidency, people might think, okay, I don't, maybe I'm a supporter of subsidy. The, I believe Nigerians need to subsidize fuel because we are, we are a largely poor country. But Nigeria isn't actually subsidizing fuel for Nigeria. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. We are subsidizing fuel for the entire West Africa. Mm -hmm. And the government has tried to solve the corruption in fuel subsidy, and they couldn't. And the burden of subsidizing fuel for the entire West Africa is crippling our economy. So the solution is, let us just stop removing fuel subsidy. And... To that extent, I understand when you've done all you can and you don't such a solution, you will do the only other option available, which is to remove subsidy. Based on where we are now, how do we ensure that um, Nigerians understand the journey? It's a painful one. So the president has promised us renewed hope. He has come on the campaign and said he knew the problem. And 
everybody will know. Go back and check on YouTube. I was reiterating the kind of problem the new president was going to come and meet. And he also said, don't pity me. And I know the work. Yes. He said, don't so pity based me. Based on that, the president oh, is yeah, not ready. Right. We're not setting him to sleep. We're setting him that he will do yeah. the necessary work Absolutely. to give us that hope by letting us know the plans he has. There must be a plan. Yes. And... Nigerians will know we are suffering it for a while. We're going, it's going to be a serious Absolutely. suffer. Okay, in addition to that, no, okay, I, wanted to, I wanted to bring the NLC part. The N, that, that's what I'm going to. So when NLC, and, and Nigerians will now tell NLC that we know you're not fighting for us. Because at the end of the day, when settlements happen, mm -hmm. in the, in the face of it, you fight for us. But when there are settlements, you will be covered and but, all of us will be left alone. So the because it's the, it's the conspiracy theory that has been backed up with years of what we but keep so hearing. What, so so like, what if they say there's a strike now, what will happen? Businesses will shut down. NLC, I don't want us to just complain, state the problems again. What we expect of NLC, mm. what we would like NLC to, to do, do, what I would like it to do, what okay. I would like to say, what, 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 what compromise? What government to do? Governments should give us a, a framework yes. of how they would help Nigerians. Yes. And the framework, please, Nigerians, understand, the framework will not mean there's a solution in the short term. All of us will have to bear that pain. But Nigerians want to see that the government is also suffering. You know, they want to feel that... Maybe the, the, a policy of all the government workers will not be getting free fuel because we know the majority yes. of government workers get free fuel. They don't pay for their fuel. So all government workers are also buying this Buy fuel. So, 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 and so, so, we will see in the budget that yes. this money is being saved. So what, so what I want to be hearing from Labour is what you are saying. Yes. You say, okay, you are going to increase minimum wage from this amount to, to this amount. amount. Yeah. You know, it's important now because the right now minimum wage is 30,000 naira. If they're saying that, they so if government says, wait, no if government, government says, I am going to no, save, immediate. wait, no, it can be immediate. When I start saving that money, for example, I can say from January 2024, this is how much I'm going to start paying for minimum wage. You never know. You are informed. We're not saving any money. We were borrowing money to pay subsidy. So we're not saving. We're just going to stop ourselves okay. from borrowing. Oh, we'll okay. borrow so we don't have that money. So let me, let, me, let, me, let me pause this for a second because I want us, because I don't want us to just assume that anyone else is going to go there to negotiate for their own personal exactly. reasons. I want okay. us so to go, and if, if they have, if they're not sure what to negotiate for, let us tell them now. Mm -hmm. So what we hope that you can negotiate with the government to ensure that this money that is saved is adequately used. Let me take this call and I'll come to you, Mariam. I have a caller. Good morning, are you there? I don't have any. Okay, I'm sorry, I lost that call. Yes, so let's break break Okay. Back. I'm making it an expert now. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the one who can make time stand still forever, Mr. Kelechi Amadi. <laughs> 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 How are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good, my brother. You love that intro, Abby. Yeah. It was great. Okay, yeah. Thank we, you. We, we, thank we try you. like that. Thank you. Thank you. Now my question, which I feel is a cheap question. Oh, go ahead. What does ISO stand for? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That is it. I think I'll drink. <laughs> no, you're joking. I'm not joking. Clear your mind. No. <laughs> She, you didn't want me. me. You want me no. I think I'll drink. Huh? No problem. Okay. <laughs> I've always known this as ISO. I never bothered to know what it means. I know what it means, but I never really bothered to know what the acronym is. Tell me the, the, the brand of camera that I use so much so that you know, I even became an ambassador. That is that's very easy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Sorry. It's, out there. it's supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. I just said, let me take a give you this one. As a token of my appreciation. <laughs> Sony. Drink! No, 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 I'm not there, I'm not there. <laughs> I'm not there, I'm not there, I'm not there. You do not, you, you do not say final answer. This final answer. You do not, you do not ask me if that was my final answer. You don't answer. have any choice again. It's only you. Yeah, how, many, how many cameras do they have? My friend, the drink, I gave you a very easy something. Nikon now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please help welcome to the show, La General, the one and only Pere Egui. Which of the following is false about teeth? Read, read we are again. born with 20 primary teeth. Hmm. Teeth are the hardest substance in the body. Teeth are the strongest bones in the body. Teeth is not a bone, actually. 
teeth uh teeth uh, can self-repair the strongest bone in the body no teeth is not a bone final answer teeth is not a bone You know what came to my head now? That sound. Meh, 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 meh. Crickets. <laughs> so, editor, you can put that cricket sound there. Very it's just. It's, you can still put it down too. When was the first Gould Ultimate Search? Editor, don't put any cricket sound. I'm talking. I'm talking. Okay, Per. How many times has Ghana qualified for the World Cup? <laughs> Five times. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. All right, so we're going to be um, bringing in some experts to help our conversation because as we always like to hear first the ladies' views and get Nigerians to hear their views and then bring in experts to shed some light for us. And right now on the show, we have with us um, Dr. Muda Yusuf. He is the um, Chief Executive Officer, Center for Promotion of Private Enterprise, CPPE. Good morning, sir. Good morning. My pleasure to be with you. Good to have you. So I'm sure you've been watching the show earlier. There's been a lot of debates, conversations, arguments, um, thoughts on the removal of subsidy and the planned strike by NLC. What are your own general thoughts on this development? Well, uh, first of all, uh, the good thing is that there is a consensus, at least to a large extent, that Okay. 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 So I think we have we. It's, he's frozen. We can mm. for us. I think he was just saying that there's a large consensus. Everybody agrees that it should go. But the issue is that. Uh, both are more, oh, sorry, yes, we lost every, you. No, I want to start over, that. sir. Doctor Yusuf, please start over. We didn't hear you at all. No. What, what I'm saying is that there is a consensus. I mean, to a large extent that this subsidy is not sustainable, you know, and uh, I think the, the main issue now is about building a consensus around how we should remove it. Mm -hmm. Actually, in his inaugural speech, he didn't mean to say that the subsidy should go immediately. He didn't mean to say that. He was just emphasizing, emphasizing the fact that this subsidy is going to go, and uh, and uh, we have to ensure that just to prepare our mind for it. Unfortunately, the way the issues now went, people, the marketers, everybody reacted instantaneously in a way that it was difficult to roll back or to reverse. <laughs> yeah. So we are now in it. And I think what we need to do now is to see how we can manage the crisis. Of course, there's a lot of pain. I mean, when you are talking about an increase of over 150% ah. in fair price, that is a lot. That's a shock. But unfortunately, this is, the, this is what the price we have to pay for a long period of neglect of addressing this very critical reform. So what I think we should be talking about now is how to alleviate these pains. Yeah, okay. There are immediate, immediate responses, there are short-term things, there are medium-term things, there are long-term measures okay. that needs to be taken. I think that is what we should be facing. And labor should not be walking away from dialogue. It is not yeah, a good thing. Because you cannot insist at this point that <laughs> government should go back to status quo. Like that is not practical. So, okay. labor should come to the table and put 
these conditions on the table on how to mitigate the pains of this. And right. going forward, as the situation stabilizes, even this high price is likely to come down. Okay. You know, Let me get a few questions so, in for you, so sir. Those, those are my initial thoughts about this. Thing. All right. Okay, uh, Dr. Um, Muda Yusuf. <laughs> Let me ask you, what, what, would you, what do you think should be some of the things that labor should be presenting on the table in terms of solutions? So subsidy has been removed. We can't go back to the old price anymore. Government doesn't have the money to pay. But we need to um, talk about moving forward, and we need to ask or request that the government put some things in place to alleviate the, you know, the pain of this subsidy removal. So what are some of the things you think NLC should be pushing forward with the government? First of all, is the wage review. Wage review. The wages in, the, wages in the public service is extremely poor extremely poor, even before the subsidy issue. You know what inflation had done to the wages of people generally over the last few years. Now, this subsidy removal has made it worse. Mm. Unfortunately, transportation and food are two major things that even the poor cannot afford not to undertake. And it goes close to 50 or 60% of family budget. So we need to address the issue of wages, and it is something that can be quickly done. Okay. So this is one. And this is not just restricted to the public sector. The private sector, of course, to the extent that they have capacity, should also respond to private sector workers by immediately reviewing wages. This can be done immediately. And this can be done from whatever savings we are getting from this subsidy. The second thing I think needs to be done is to look at the general cost of living generally, apart from transportation. Food is very expensive. What are the immediate policy measures that can be done to bring down the cost of food? Okay. We can look at tariffs, for instance. You can have an engagement with food processing companies. I mean, relating to bread, relating to noodles, some things that ordinary people eat. What immediate solutions can we get to bring down the cost? An engagement with stakeholders in the food sector or agri sector will help a great deal. So okay. this again can be done immediately. Right. Then we have things like providing more public transportation. That may take some time to be affected, but that should be also on the table. All right. Let public me get transportation that should be subsidized mm -hmm. across the country. Oh. Then we need to improve the power supply. Because if there is regular power, there will be less dependence on petrol or diesel. Right. That is also something. Then employers should please also provide buses, staff buses, to the extent that they can afford it. So the, the government should also bring the private sector into this conversation. This policy should not be limited to government. It should be extended to the private sector. Mm. There are some private sector employers who have capacity to do more than they are doing. In terms of the salaries they are paying, in terms of providing uh, right. courses, and also we need to realize that the nature of work is changing. This okay. idea of everybody going to work every day, physically, right. we need to revisit it. Wow. Thank you very much, Dr. Muda. Uh, let, let, so let me get a few more. Let me get a few more questions. Let me get a few more questions for you, um, um, Dr. Muda. Majority of Nigerians' labor force is being employed by the private sector. And mm -hmm. the majority of that are employed by small businesses like my own. So if I am facing, the reality of what I'm facing now is I, I pay salaries of about 10 people every month and they are facing a new reality in terms of their salary not being enough to even cover transport fare and feeding. And they are looking to me to pay more money. How do I transfer that cost? Who am I going to transfer it to? The, can the government tell me to pay more money simply because the cost of living has gone up when there is no any, I don't, I'm going to be borrowing money. I'm borrowing money from the bank at 28%. I still got a phone call from the bank on Friday that they want to give me more loan at 28%. So essentially, 28% is going to bank. Salary will consume by this time, in terms of percentage, another 30 to 40%. What is the business? My CIT will consume 30% of profits for every limited liability business. Are we being realistic about the demand we're placing on? businesses, private businesses to increase salary. So
So because government can be compelled to do it, but how do we get private businesses to do the same, realistically? True. You know, you have different levels of employers. Okay. What I've said may not necessarily apply to all small businesses. Okay. Most small businesses are also major victims of what has happened because their costs are going up and depending on the kind of product you are producing. For some products, you can transfer increased costs to your customers. For some, you can transfer partially. For some, you cannot transfer at all. So the shock of that will be on the owner of the business. And that, of course, Okay, I think we're frozen yeah. again. Okay, fine. Okay, we can. I'm right. making is that as who have capacity to do more. We have, we have employers. I mean, we, see, we have seen some profits being declared by some companies. So for those segments of employers, they should do more. All right. Let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the Grand Comedian of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Benga the Inca, the first! <laughs> OJ right here, 7 of 7, like you already know. Benga right here, 7 of 7, like I'm beginning to know. <laughs> mm. Mm. It's now time for the question. You don't scare me one bit. Bata bata, I go drink. So, okay. so now one chance for inter. My, My first question. question. Do you remember the names of the winners of that edition of StarQuest? Of course I do. Why uh, do you? And I, and, I, and, I, and I hate myself for this. Because I have this question for you. Final question. No. Where, where outside Nigeria and what year? I think you're the only one that can be wicked. I am thinking because I know back in the day. Don't think, oh, don't think. Answer my question quick, quick. You are thinking too much. I don't like it. The UK. Final answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I said, God, God, please. Let me to perform outside Nigeria. Wait, 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 wait. And wait, wait, God wait. gave me a trip, a show in Ghana. <laughs> drink, my friend, drink, drink. Drink, drink, drink. I know. I don't. I don't overthink this thing. See where I can. Yes, you overthink him. I will say you can't walk. Uh, let's can't walk. <laughs> Where are we? No, that's not can't walk. That's, that's good. That's, that's good. That's <laughs> Come closer. Effect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics. Thanks for staying with us. We still have our guest, Dr. Yusuf, with us. I know Mariam had a question yes. for the break. Mm. We're so, going. Doctor, I have, my question is, you know, I'm, I'm really curious to know, like, what sort of conversations you would have with TUC and NLC that would, um, you know, almost put them off that they are insisting on a strike. Is it that they do not see any way forward? Because let's sure. look at... Oh, so he can't hear us. He's not, he's, we're trying to reconnect with him. Okay. Um, but based on what he said so far, I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, mm. he's been saying a few things he believes that NLC should be asking for, one of which I think is the fact that um, the employers should try to see what they can do to review. And I think it's an interesting... He's not talking to all employers, because not yeah. everybody can actually review their salaries. But 
the cost of food, the cost of petrol, the mm. cost of transportation has increased. I was saying last week that I bought fuel, filled my tank, 32,000. It's never happened before in my entire <laughs> life. You know, and, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I'm trying to calculate where I go to. Mm. I'm told it's back. Dr. Yusuf, are you there? Can you hear me? Dr. Yes, I can hear you. Very good. Yeah. Miriam had a question for you. Yes. Let me let her start. So my question would be, you know, we've discussed um, like the immediate um, things that government can do. And I'm wondering if this were put on the table with NLC, why, what kind of conversation would tick t NLC off that they are not sitting at the table? Or could it be that um, there's a fear of transfer of subsidy? So if we're saying we're taking out um, petroleum subsidy, and then we're talking about um, palliatives and alleviating transportation and things like that, are we not just transferring you know, subsidy from one product to another? And then before you know it, we have the same issues that we're having with this one. No, 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 no. The pro you see, subsidy in itself is not a bad thing. The problem with this petrol subsidy is that it is not effectively targeted at the vulnerable segments of society. Mm. We, are, we are subsidizing guys who are riding SUVs. We are subsidizing people who are riding convoys. Mm. We are subsidizing corruption. We are mm. subsidizing the neighboring countries. That is what is wrong with this subsidy. If it was something that was sitting squarely within us, perhaps it could have been more manageable. Yeah. But the thing has completely spin out of control and it's blowing up our budget. Yeah. That is the problem. Subsidy is not a bad thing at all. I mean, you should subsidize education, for instance. We are subsidizing university education. The reach of the billionaires will not go to all these public universities. We are subsidizing hospitals, general hospitals. The rich people hardly go to general hospitals. So if it's hospitalized something like public transportation, and our third will not come and be going in a, in public bus. Mm -hmm. But if you are selling cheap fuel, and our third will go and buy cheap fuel. Mm -hmm. That is the difference. Mm -hmm. right. So we should focus on targeted subsidies that actually relate to the poor. That is why this issue of public transportation is important. This issue of wages is important. Mm -hmm. And someone has even suggested waiving taxes. For a particular category of workers and even SMEs, these are some of the things can, that can be All done. Right, sir, one of one of the things people have said is that <clears throat> one of the reasons, because we discussed it last week, that the issue of trust is a major problem. Nigerians feel that the corporates or these um, cabal that have been taking our subsidized fuel across the country, that many of them have not been arrested or convicted or no, nobody has been brought to book. And I just feel that there are still those that are hobnobbing with politicians, and they are the reasons why Nigerians don't trust. That even if government saves this money, nothing will be done, and that's on one level. Then Melekiari also said that hopefully in the coming months, um, the, the price of fuel will reduce, because obviously they're expecting that. I don't know what factors he was using, but many are suggesting that if more licenses are given to Nigerians' private sector to import fuel, it becomes, more, it becomes more competitive, and then you have more, market, more people who are bringing in fuel, aside from this cabal, this small group of marketers. If more licenses are, are thrown out there, then the prices of fuel begin to reduce because people now can be competitive and have find ways to bring in the right kind of fuel for Nigeria at a cheaper price. What are your thoughts on these two um, issues I've raised? Well, on the issue of trust, we have a new administration. And my appeal is that we should give the administration the benefit of the doubt okay. on this. And just as you said in your intro, all the major political parties promised that they were going to withdraw the subsidy. So it's not peculiar to this current uh, party or this current government. So we should give the administration the benefit of the doubt. We should put whatever the stakeholders will be engaged so that they put whatever views they have on the table on the basis of which we can hold the government accountable. These agreements will be signed, and if the government fails to do anything, we can hold them accountable. That is one. Secondly, relating to the issue of uh, a long-term reduction in, in square price, yes, that is the beauty of a market economy. What has happened over time is that we are dealing with a monopoly situation. Mm -hmm. In this petroleum business, it's only an MPC that has been importing or refining and selling. And once you have a monopoly situation, you are very vulnerable to exploitation. Mm. 
That is the reality. So if you have more people, you know, importing or refining, because ultimately we should be refining. We should not even be talking of importation as an oil producing country. But in the short term, maybe in the next couple of, I mean, few months, you may still have to import. But we cannot leave the importation only to NMPC. Because it's a monopoly, and people are make, just ripping off the citizens. So we should create a framework where all the other players we have access to foreign exchange. Mm. Because what they have complained all along is that they don't have access to foreign exchange. So it's only an NPC. And once an NPC imports, it has its own selected uh, distributors or dealers. Yeah. And these people are taking advantage of the fact that they are the only players. So yeah. I agree with the GMD that if you open up the space a lot more, more people import, more people refine, in addition to the dango tape, we see some competition. But the best way to protect citizens, the best way to protect consumers against exploitation is competition. Yeah. The more people that you have in the, in the space, the better. We had the experience with the GSM. How much did we start with, uh, with the SIM card? Over 30,000. All right, let me pause you for a second. Okay. Like, Nicole, let me pause you for a second. I have a final question for you. Yes. Um, based on the knowledge I have about the way the, the corruption in the subsidy system, at least the one that we've heard, and your analysis, it, I don't, I don't, I'm a bit confused. Because what we've heard about the corruption in the subsidy system is that our fuel is being taken, we, there's an inflation of our consumption. I, do, you, do you think that that's within the NNPC or within the major oil marketers or who, who do you believe are the cabal that are taking advantage of the system? Because it, I don't think it is the importation that the problem comes from. It is in the, in the fact that we don't know the figure of our consumption, and they say we are giving to Bene, Chad, and Nije a subsidized fuel. How do we address that gap? You see, the challenge is that the whole system is extremely porous. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there are leakages across the entire chain. Mm. Right from importation to marketing to distribution, there are leakages. And some people have said we should be policing. How much, how many will you police? So the only solution is to scrap the thing, quite frankly. There are leakages everywhere. I mean, we have the Petroleum Equalization Fund. We are also voting close to a trillion naira every year on that. And the whole idea is that. Fuel to sell at the same price across the country. Then you claim what you call the cost of bridging. And you have somebody take fuel from here to Ibadan, and you come and make claims that they are taking fuel from here to, to Maiduguri. And because they have so much money, they can bribe anybody. So for me, right. the solution is right. to just scrap the thing completely. Okay. And let's see how we manage. The, the outcome of, 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 of right. the withdrawal. Thank you very much, Dr. Muda. I have to let you go at this. And thank you so much for joining us, the um, Chief Executive Officer Center for Promotion of Private Enterprise. Thank you, sir, for joining us. We're going to go on a break now. When we come back, bring in our next guest to share more in in insights on this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be ask questions if I want to ask questions. And if it's something that I saw coming, I may not even ask questions. I mean, just you. I may even tell you I saw this. What if, what if it's in person? Mm -hmm. But then, would it make a difference where? So, like, this person might just say, you people can just be on third mill language. <laughs> on a bike. <laughs> and the person say, babe, I cannot do it again. <laughs> and you lose range. <laughs> So, uh, what would oh change? God. What would change the scenario? For, like, does it matter where? Do you want to have like a fancy dinner, hey, like the film you were mentioning? No, 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 like about, it, and then, right. Or do you want to be on the street? No, carry me. Don't fancy dinner. Or even just on a run for treadmill. <laughs> 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 or even on a jog. Don't tell you, you're loose for your web. No, don't tell me. 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 Don
In person, you have the closure that you want and a few injuries. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> that's one place. It could be inside the car. You can sit inside the car. Why car? Why not bike? Who will be driving? Why bike? Who will be no, driving no, no, at the this car point? will be stationary. Pray I'm not the, the one driving. They just will be pray. stationary. Because I'll go, I'll go mad at them. You can't be told me like me. I'm going to drive there whatever. water away. Right? <laughs> only, only you only must consider. <laughs> Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. Thanks for staying with us. We have um, still talking about subsidy issue and the planned NLC strike. We'll be inviting now our next guest, Mr. Taiwo Uyedili. He is the fiscal policy partner and Africa tax leader at um, PwC, that's Price Waterhouse Cooper. Um, he is an author, keynote speaker, strategist, policy analyst, and commentator on finance. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much uh, for having so me. Good, good morning. Yeah, it's always good to have you. So, the whole of Nigeria is talking NLC and subsidy removal. Let me start with your general thoughts on, on, on this. How do you think it would affect uh, fiscal planning, especially as with the giants of Africa? Yes, Giants of Africa. So we haven't been able to demonstrate that in concrete terms uh, over the past few years. So the oil producing countries are smiling. Um, we have the likes of Saudi Aramco declaring record profits uh, bigger than Apple, Google, and Facebook combined. So Nigeria should, you know, be talking about tens of billions of dollars now, but sadly that's not our story. So, which means why that decision may not be the most, um, you know, um, friendly or the most expected. Uh, it is the right decision, in my view. And therefore, I think going uh, on strike and insisting that government should reverse that decision before you can continue discussing, I think is misplaced. I don't think it's the role of the NLC to dictate policies to government. NLC can go on strike because you're asking for, you know, wage increases or palliative, but not insisting that a policy has to be reversed before you continue your conversation. Yeah, interesting. So overall, I think the impact on the economy, in my view, uh, will be a very short period of pain, followed by a very long-term period of prosperity, mm. and that would really touch the lives of everybody. So we should make the sacrifice now. Wow. Okay. So this long, this short period of pain, in concrete terms, what are we talking about? Because for what I can tell you right now is that we know that it costs a lot. Given our minimum wage, most of us may not be able to, you know, afford to move around next month, you know. So that's what I'm seeing. And so I would like to know, this um, period of pain, is it a four-month period? Is it a two-month period? And what, exact, what is the exact pain that Nigerians would have to bear? to see the years of prosperity? Yeah, that's a very good question. So the most apparent pain will be from transportation costs. That's what people feel immediately. But then you also feel that uh, impact uh, in terms of general inflation, which is rising the prices of goods and services across different areas. 
I was on TV, a woman who said that uh, she photocopied a, a document, one page for 20 naira before, but now it's 50 naira. Mm. Now, what you're seeing, and that's just one example, what you're seeing is there is an initial overreaction. So, my driver, when I went to Abuja a few days ago, said, you know, he was asking the driver of the bus that uh, he took to the office to say, are you trying to collect the extra amount you pay for fuel from just one passenger? when you can carry 14. So that's the variation is what we are dealing with now. I'll tell you that the real impact is a lot less than what we are dealing with uh, in these few days after the announcement. So things will stabilize. Mm. And when they do stabilize, uh, I expect there should be a marginal increase in inflation, particularly transportation. So that will particularly affect uh, the price of food in urban areas. The impact of this first subsidy exactly. in rural area will be almost negligible. You may not even feel it at all because their touch point with petrol is very, uh, very minimal. The reason why the impact will not be as big as we will have feared is because uh, a lot of what really impacts our lives uh, most directly in terms of, of production is diesel. This is what they use for factories. In fact, most of the trucks, if not all of them, the trucks that transport food already run on diesel. And we've been looking that over the past few weeks, couple of months, the price of diesel has been okay. coming down. Yeah. So if government can even save foreign exchange from this petrol, because everybody agreed, including GMP or NNPC, that we don't know what we are consuming. So whatever we save from this subsidy, right, in foreign currency, if you use that to supply the market for importation of inputs. It's frozen. Mm. Ew, we're having a bit of um, internet. It's very rare for things to come down in Nigeria. Mm. Even if the petrol or the diesel comes down, the tomato and pepper will go up. Is, no, not even, like people, people don't, even tomato and pepper comes down. But goods, the things that you buy, clothing, all of those, they don't come down. They just, they just go up and they stay. Is that based, on, you, is that based on with the people or based on the because my, my it, dynamics? Because if, 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 if it's about dynamics, it should come down. But with the people, always take advantage. You know what? Ah, that's gone up. No, we can't go back. I bought it at dollar price. So we, we also, that, that factor is also Everything there. is dollar price, even and tomatoes. It, yes. Everybody will tell you it's dollar price. For you so no more, so it, when, when, when we project based on the, um, the, the data we have, we would think it would go down, but in the Nigerian factor, it just never goes down. Is it back? Are, we, are we back, sir? Hello, are you there? Yes, yeah, yes, yes, I'm here. Okay, okay so, sir, um, you know, this pain that um, we have been analyzing, um, I'd like your suggestion on how we can all bear the brunt together as one united force so that in a few months' time, hopefully, we'll be able to Once? ease out of it. Yes, I don't see it in weeks in a few months' time, in the sense that um, we know that our government is highly subsidized. Most of our government officials do not use their personal funds to buy this. So because what I see is sometimes when we need to bear the brunt, it's usually transferred to the poor and the masses. They are the ones that pay the price while the government is still able to get some of these things for free. So what would you suggest or what advice would you give that if government really wants the people to trust it and... You know, we need to tighten the belt together. What are some of the things that they would have to cut down so that everybody just goes through the pain and is out into um, prosperity sometime? Because I don't know when. Yeah, very good question. So um, I do think first, uh, just to, um, you know, work based on data and facts. Uh, so... It is symbolic and it's important as part of leadership for government to try and show that they are prudent and that they are making sacrifices. But I have to tell you that even if everybody in government today decides not to collect one naira from government, we will still be a poor country. So that's not where uh, Nigeria's uh, rescue and silver bullets will come from. But I do agree, like I said, it's important for signaling because as a leader, you cannot live at large like everything is normal and then ask your followers to make all the sacrifices. Yeah. Mm. So government needs to do that. And there's a lot of transparency that is required. If you are saving four or five trillion naira, and we agree, even with the governors, because they'll be shut from where I live, why can't I find something too. nearby? Yeah. Uh, why do I live in uh, Keja to go to church in you know, in Ibadan uh, Expressway when there's another one that is next door? So some of these things also require that we think differently. Do I have to put my car on the road every time? 
or can we not have investment in public infrastructure that is decent? Public, sorry, public transportation that is decent. You see a CEO in, in, in the UK will tell you, I don't have a car, right? Yeah, yeah. Because the transportation is conducive. Go to Abuja, there's not even public Makes transportation. Sense. So oh, wow. I'm not saying government should solve all the problems. Some of it is also private sector. These are you investment know. opportunities that people should start thinking about now. And collectively, we can uh, go through this uh, and come out better. Hmm. Thank you very much. I mean, I mean, you're just saying, because sometimes I'm unable to articulate the, the thoughts in my head. But when I hear people like you speak, you just help me to um, put, um, properly put it in proper perspective. Because I've always felt that sometimes it seems like we Nigerians, we live beyond our means. Okay, so all your friends have cars. You want to get a car. Why? When your office actually, my yeah. office, my house, I, I live exactly nine minutes away. Walk? Really, I have no business yeah. having a car. That's the truth. Really, if I want yeah. to be, if I want to be truthful and realistic driving, to myself, car to work. driving my car to work, I should have a bicycle. Really, and truthfully, if I was in the same, if I was in, if I was in the same economy, in the same country, I, 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 as a citizen, and wouldn't even consider. But we could not. But listen, you'll be surprised. Eventually, if we get to that point, I will get something smaller to get me to work. Yeah. Only maybe I now drive my car once a week or something. Maybe I need to go to church. Or yeah. Then we, 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 we adjust. Well, but the other countries, they are working. No, well, here we don't want to enter cab from point A to point B, just two minutes away. So right, there, there's guess. the one of uh, the one I noticed yesterday that many people we live in an estate. Many people that attend church live within the same estate, and they still don't drive, drive the car to the, <laughs> the car from their house to the church. Number one, some will even use driver to drive them from their house to the church within the same estate. So yes, I love the idea of being practical. Me, I'm going to. What we need to do carpooling. We need to plan our pickup yes. from school. Mm -hmm. that, exactly. We don't need. If there are three children living with three families in the same exactly. estate. You must design, design design a way to one family picks up the child on Monday, another person on Tuesday, so that yeah. we're not driving all the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. Planning a way to cut our expenses. Thank okay, you so much. Okay, sir. Let me. There was a question I wanted to ask you. I think I hope I've not lost that question. Um, I mean, no. anybody has any questions? Yes, please. Let me, uh, let, me, let me come in with a question. So, um, there's something you said that struck me. I, I know that as a country, we can always say that we don't have, Nigeria is not a rich country, Nigeria is not a rich country. But when you said that if all government officials don't take money oh, no. from government, mm -hmm. We that still. the country will still be poor. That one, I don't understand. Mm. Please let me explain to how. Yeah, that because, agree. Please let no, me no, let no. me let me even tell <laughs> help him, <laughs> sir. You know why you, that is a very important question Tokoy just asked. Because every Nigerian, mm. like the ninety nine point nine nine percent of Nigerians, believe that all our money is in the hands of these zero point zero zero percent politicians. Yeah. Yeah. So because they feel that way, it's important mm. for you to answer that question very well. No, so let me put it carefully. Let me put it carefully. Let me put it of context, sir, mm. because we see <laughs> politicians that were living in rented apartments before they became mm. local government chairmen. Mm -hmm. And the moment they mm. become, they, now live in they buy mansions. Cars, they buy a house, they, their, their children change schools, they start they school abroad. Mm. So their life changes. Yeah. So I cannot understand how not giving them money will not change our circumstance as Nigeria. Let me give you the next 20 <laughs> minutes to say this. <laughs> Go ahead, take your time. <laughs> Yes. So thank you. I, I like the way you put it. So there are two issues, and I'd like to separate them. Mm -hmm. One, there's corruption, where you can inflate contracts. You award it for one billion, but you only spend 50 million. You keep 950 million to yourself. Yeah. That's why somebody can buy a house. Mm -hmm. They're not buying the house from the money they're being paid legitimately, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there are two issues. The money they are being paid legitimately. That know. money, I'm saying, they stop collecting it today, and they don't collect one error. The difference would be negligible. The whole of the National Assembly's budget is around 150 billion naira. It's not going to solve Nigeria's problem when you have a deficit at the federal government alone of 11 trillion. I've not even added states and local governments. Hmm. Yeah. So, but the one we need to focus on is the corruption, yeah. corruption. Yeah. which is why you are what the country. And more than half of it is going to private pockets. Mm. They have all manners of way of doing it. It's not an SPV. It's one entity somewhere. It's in fact, they award contract that they had no intention of executing just to make money for wow. themselves. That is the one that is killing us. And that's what we need to focus on. Fantastic. And that has nothing to do with first subsidy, right? It's a separate conversation. And I think it will be with us for some time because, to be honest, we blame politicians. And I'm not saying we shouldn't blame them for being corrupt. Mm. But majority of ordinary people are just as corrupt. corrupt. Just yeah. removing yeah. first subsidy alone, people start selling at 650 the next minute. Even though the inventory they had, they bought at once is something. Need the people. You know, so that that is the way I'll <laughs> respond to that. To do. Ah. 
<laughs> Thank you, Jerry Ogami. Thank you, but you see, it's important that it, 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 let me let me let me let me. Our, it's important for us to get. Yeah. Their salary is not the problem. We know. Oh, no, no, we don't know. Oh, we always go thirty million naira a month. Thirty. You know, we come up with these numbers. I will say that about their palace with such confidence. We know. But I'm saying well, the it's point. not their salaries. Is the contract they have access to? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's where the corruption is. That we fight, not the fact that they are not this amount. And the pensions that they will be getting but, afterwards. No, so we right. know everything boils down together. So we look at what MDs, CEOs, and in different private organizations. sector, and private it's, sector. It's times we, yes, we cannot compare that because you chose to serve. There's a difference. You would have just become your private person, be your MD, do your own business. That's a different thing. When you choose to serve, you must serve in humility. You must be moderate about it. Absolutely. That's what I say. So whether I have, um, you know, contingent liabilities, I can make a commitment with the intention of stealing later, right? So it has a lot of loopholes as it mm. is. But even if you ignore that moment, even with the loopholes, the little information we are getting from it, we're not using it. Mm. And I'll give you a very simple one uh, that is almost, uh, you know, you, you can't dispute. It's tax compliance. So if you declare today that you are worth 10 million naira, the first thing that you do, which every country will do, is go check their tax record. Have you de did you declare this before over the years? Yeah. How did you accumulate 10 million naira? How much taxes mm. have you paid? Because mm -hmm. sometimes it's not about the amount of money you make from these politicians. It's the sense of leadership. Mm. Is that tone from the top? Is that moral authority? In addition to the legal power to lead, you control you know, forces, you can harass people, you can pick them up. You also need to earn that moral authority to mm. lead. That's why if you look at Seriously. Donald Trump, Google the US president, they not only do the right thing in terms of declaring their assets, paying taxes, they even publish it. Yeah. I know what he says, there's no law that said publish, but they're saying, well, I'm the most powerful and I'm doing the right thing. Thanks. Now, let's see the so, person that has three heads not to do the right thing. Yeah. The <laughs> Prime Minister of the UK was fined for <laughs> driving without seatbelts at the back, oh, yeah. you know? So this is how this is how societies evolve and develop, trying mm -hmm. to do things and respect process. Wow. That is what is missing in Nigeria. They'll declare, they'll declare this asset now and nothing will happen. We'll keep it four years, we'll declare again. We, keep, we'll, we like keeping records. Not really processing them for ah. meaningful things for the, for the very very interesting. You know, so all this big manism you do, if you're not paying your taxes, really, well, you're nobody. I mean, okay. many of them just half of them are many of these people. Some well, you can argue that, we're that not they're evaluating not, that. But they just they just provide this, and we don't yeah. use it to get, get the data. Mm. We have numbers, but we don't mm. we don't assess it to be able to have a conclusion to know how to treat these people. Because we need those loopholes to be able to carry out corruption. Yeah, mm. check it too much. We have to wrap up, sir. Any final words? I didn't, I didn't ask you about your thoughts on NLC. So we know you've you've, you've given us all the various angles as regards. Uh, why this is a good, why this is um, important for us to actually remove subsidy. But this strike that they are going, this one that electricity workers have said they are going to join in. I don't want that. Um, so, in your view, just let me, let me hear your thoughts on this, on this strike on action. Do you think, how do you yeah. think the government can meet them halfway? Yes. So, I think first I'll say that people need to move away from politicking. We are done with the elections. I know there are cases in court and courts will do their they do their job uh, for every day that you wish your country evil in Nigeria. That's equivalent of 10,000 people's life. The entire life is what you are wasting. Hmm. So, for example, I don't see why electricity workers want to join the the strike and then they want to shut down the grid. What's the connection between that? Why are you shutting down the grid? just tell us that they're shutting down the grid. Yeah, so that's like sabotage. Why is NLC insisting that you have to revert back before they can mm. negotiate? Mm. The mm. powers mm. they have is for them to negotiate for their members. Yeah. And they should feel free to do that. And then we should not end up, uh, at the end of the day, removing one subsidy and negotiating yeah, by all means. Subsidies in other areas that will even be more expensive and get out of hands mm. in the next few years. That Nigeria so cannot afford that. If this country yeah. goes down, uh, like we've seen in Sri Lanka, sometimes in Zambia or what, uh, you know, Ghana is dealing with, it will not be able to, no other country will be able to contain us. And this is the time to make the sacrifice and do the right thing for the interest of not only this generation, but our, our born generation that will come after us. Oh, thank you very much. We have to wrap up. I know the vice president um, um, told us very clearly that the cabal is very strong, that they're going to fight this. So we're expecting 
a lot of more. I mean, I'm, I'm even happy that it's not as bad as I thought, but hopefully there's some negotiations could be met today and NLC and TUC and others may be able to shove their strikes so that they can reach an agreement because we've all largely agreed that it's time for subsidy to go. However, government must raise the responsibilities and ensure that Nigerians, um, they alleviate the pain or the shock of this change on Nigerians so we don't even go further into poverty. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Udili for joining us this morning. We Thank you, sir. Really appreciate your insights and thoughts yes. this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you for that, having me. That is all we can take on today's show. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.